And did you become involved with CERN? So that would be, I started doing particle physics in 95. And when was, when did the Large Hadron Collider go live? That was, um, I remember it was 2000 and, um, 2007, I think it was, wow. or 2008. It's so long ago. I can't yeah. remember, it was about 10 years ago. But it started up, it started up and then we had a problem with it and then it took a bit a while to fix. Um, so it hasn't been taking data that long. But it's a tremendously successful thing now, but, and it's it's operating beyond its design capabilities. It's quite incredible. It's so stunning, it's like as a physical thing, that this. I mean, how large is it? How large? How large is it's, the loop? Um, it's twenty-seven kilometers. So what's that? About sixteen miles. Sixteen miles, and it's a circular, yeah, sort of a building. Yeah. Well, it's it's a big tube. I mean, you think basically it's mo mainly under France and partly under Switzerland, and it accelerates protons around in a circle. Uh, both ways, that one one beam goes one way, one goes the other way, and they go around eleven thousand times a second. So that's the very close to the speed of light, ninety nine point nine 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 percent the speed of light. Wow. And then we cross the beams and collide the particles, and in those collisions, you're recreating the conditions that were present less than a billionth of a second after the Big Bang. So we we know that physics. So going back what you said about the carbon and the oxygen, we can trace that story back way beyond the time when there were protons and neutrons to when there were quarks and gluons around and and go all the way back and the Higgs boson doing its thing back then. And we, so we can see all that physics in the lab. So that's why we have some a lot of confidence in that story. It's so fascinating that they were able to talk someone into funding that, that they got a it's, bunch of people together and that you you were able to explain to you know, politicians and, and, you know, regular people, what, a, what you're trying to do. It's a great example of how you get something done. So it was the, the 50s when CERN was established. I think it was 53 or 54. Can't quite remember. It's something like that. And um, it was built out from the Second World War. So, so you have Europe at the end of the war. And it was realized that the, the only way forward for Europe was collaboration to rebuild the scientific base and in for peace, for peaceful purposes. And so CERN was set up as an international collaboration in Europe initially with that political ideal that it would it would explore nature uh, just for, for, the, for the freely and for, for peace, for peaceful means, peaceful reasons. And, and so that was, uh, it, the, polit the politics was right. So it was set up by international treaty so that the member states are bound together by a treaty. And they pay a small amount, relatively small amount each, into CERN every year, which is a percentage of their GDP. And that's the money they use to build, do the experiments and build the accelerators. So it's very hard to get out of it. <laughs> and you wouldn't really want to because it's a small amount of money per country. And CERN doesn't get extra money to build things. It just takes its money and basically saves up and plans itself. But because it's got a regular stream of money, it can do it. So they can say, we're going to build this machine and it will take eight years because that's how much money we've got and we'll build it in eight years and we know how much money we've got so we can do it. And it's a lesson. I mean, the, the reason that the US Collider, the SSC, failed is because it's the problem you have in the US with the funding system, as you've seen in the last few weeks, yeah. is that it's very arbitrary and it's open to political maneuvering and, and things can be shut down and take... And, and CERN is not like that. CERN has got a guaranteed stream of funding small from each country and so you can do these projects and the one in the u.s that was during the clinton administration is that what it was uh yeah it was close was it clinton it was closed down for, by congress on a very slim vote and it was it was in texas so it was mm. it was one of those things where you got states vying for money and it was half built mm. and everyone was there you know and the thing it was bigger than the lhc and it was wow. closed down so you waste a lot of money. Is that a, a huge disappointment for the scientific community? Like, were people very hopeful that this was going to go live? Yeah, it was being built. Yeah. So they dug half the tunnel. What would it be yeah. able to do that the LHC couldn't do? It was a higher energy accelerator than the LHC. So wow. it would have discovered the Higgs particle first um, wow. had it been running. But, but the the half-built part, is it useless now? Or can they, I think they sort of recharge it, in, it up yeah. again? No, I think they, they filled, filled it in. It in? I think so. Oh. I mean, it was just half a tunnel, you know? So that, <sighs> that's but, the thing. It, it, you can do these wonderful uh, things for not a lot of money if you 
just do it over many years and have stable funding yeah. and just commit to doing it. The filling it in part is like... And you look at CERN as well, and people, you know, people ask me now, I think the UK pays about, it's about $100 million a year. That's what the UK pays in. And it's about the same for Germany, same for France, and so on. And so people say, what do we get for that? I mean, first of all, it's not, the whole budget of CERN is about the same as the budget of a medium-sized university. So it's not a lot. It's about a, a billion dollars a year or something, which is what a, a university has. So it's not a lot in the scheme of things. Um, what's it done, though? Well, we invented the World Wide Web, as we've just said. A lot of the medical imaging technology that we use co comes from CERN. It's pioneered the use of these very high field magnets, which is what it needed. So it's, it's engineering at the edge. And engineering at the edge uh, generates spin-offs and expertise to get used in other fields. So there's cancer treatment, so-called hadron beam therapy. So if you've got a brain tumor now, it's quite likely that you'll have one of these targeted particle beam therapies, which is like very highly targeted sort of chemotherapy. It's not chemotherapy, it's just radiation that you can target in a beam into your head and attack the tumor. And those, those are particle accelerators. So most particle accelerators today are in hospitals and in medicine. Wow. But they came from doing particle physics. That, so the, the, the spin-offs of these big experiments at the edge of our capability are always immense, which is why they're worth funding at these very low levels. But it's not just the knowledge. It's the engineering expertise. That there is a practical application for every everyday life. There always is. It's just finding out how to do hard things is usually useful. <laughs> it's, 